We're playing a very strong player, so 2100. Alright, so let's see. Okay, so he goes pawn e4, so let's just stick with the move c5. Okay, so he goes knight of 3. Let me play my probably my favorite opening, the knight of. Let's play the move d6. He goes d4, we continue by capturing on d4. And let's play knight of 6, attack his pawn in the center. Good evening, Chadon. Good to see you. And after knight c3, we play the move a6. And this is really where the knight of starts. White has a lot of moves here, and f3 is one of them. And there are really two ways how you can play the knight of. You can choose to play with e5 or with e6. And I really like the move. I prefer the move e5. Knight b3. And what our setup is going to be here in this structure is we're going to put this bishop on e6, the other bishop on e7. We're going to castle and put the knight on d7. We do not put the knight on c6. And this is a mistake that I see a lot of people make. So let's continue with bishop to e6. Uh, I play a lot of the subscribers. Uh, so people who are subscribed are, uh, are eligible to, to get a game. So let's play bishop e7, queen d2. And let's go short castles. You can go e6 as well. I've played a time out of yeah. And I've also played e6 in the knight of. All right, so let's see what he is going to do here. Well, the knight on c6 doesn't have any cl anywhere clear to go to. He goes knight at d5. Now, let's see. I could take with the bishop. I could also take with the knight. I think I'm going to go ahead and take with the knight and keep my bishop on the board. Let's go bishop f5. Sveshnikov is an opening. I've never played it, to be honest, I think, in a classical game. All right, so let's see what he's going to do here. Okay, one second. All right, so he goes bishop to e2. So let's figure out what we are going to do here. All right, so we could go knight to d7, of course. We could also give this little check here, which is a little bit sneaky. And that is that if he goes bishop f2, we can take and he loses the right to castle. So he'll have to go g3, which probably weakens his position, but I do have to move back. Now let's see, he could go for queenside castles. Let's say I go knight d7, maybe g4, bishop here. I don't see how, well, maybe f4. Maybe you can start to launch some sort of attack. So I'm not I'm not too thrilled about this idea, even though I think if he goes g3 and short castles, it's worth it. But let me continue by going knight d7, bringing another piece into the game. All right, so let's see what he's going to do here. It's a very complicated position. Do I have a favorite to win the Fall Classic tomorrow? Probably Vedat is the favorite. Alright, so he goes uh, Short Castles. Now I have to be a little bit careful. If he gets a move, Knight A5 could be annoying, attacking this pawn, and then maybe C4 in here. So I think I'm going to go B6 to make sure that he does not have this Knight Jump. Maybe Queen C7 was a little bit more accurate, provoking this move, or C4, but let, let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, Yu Yang, he also, of course, very strong player. Yeah, to be honest, I kind of regret the move b6 now. I feel like I should have played queen c7, but it's all right. Now, the one thing I'll, I'll tell you guys is that the, the knight of is a very complicated and a very rich opening. And the great thing about it is that it offers black a lot of chances to play for the win. On the other hand, it's also a difficult opening to play. Uh, okay, he goes rook to c1. Let's go queen c7, improve the placement of my queen a little bit. It weakens this square a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I should have played this, I feel. And Okay, but anyway, let's see what he's going to do. Okay, so it goes bishop d3, offers the trade of bishops. Now let's see, so if I take, maybe he's considering to take with the pawn and hit my queen with a tempo, but that does give him double isolated pawns. 
So let's say I go queen b7, right? Attack the pawn. He could go rook c6 to block that attack. Uh-huh. I was thinking knight f6, but then he takes here. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. So let's say I take, he takes, I go queen b7, he goes rook c6. Maybe I go rook c8, he goes rook c1. Do I have knight c5? With the idea to cut off the defense of the rook. So if he takes again, I take, and opponent d5 is very weak. I think that's all right for me. But if he goes knight a1, right, with the idea that if I take twice, he has b4, well, maybe a5. Again, it's difficult. Maybe I just go here. But I feel like I want to take in here. After rook c6, this shouldn't be terrible for me. Takes, queen takes d5. So let's just, let's just go for it. Let's take, if he takes with the queen, I'll go f5. I th think. f4 is a move. I'm not too thrilled to go e4 because then he moves the knight back and he can go knight here and here. Or here. So we'll have to weigh our options very carefully here. But nevertheless, I think taking was the correct move. All right, let's see what is going to play in this position. And of course he realizes as well that c takes d3, which is what he goes for, is a very committal move. Okay, let's go queen b7 and attack this pawn over here. Am I going to play in the next World Cup? I'll have to qualify, but of course I'd love to play. All right, let's see what he is going to do here. He goes rook c6, good move. And now we really have to make a decision. Do I go rook c8, rook c1, and knight c5, which is kind of the safe option? Or, I mean, knight f6 is arguably the safe option, because it allows him to take, I take. His rook on b6 is a little bit misplaced, though, but maybe he has here. And I don't see how to take advantage of it. So let's have a look at this. I go here, he goes here, I go here. Okay, he takes, I take with the D pawn. And again, his rook is under attack. If he takes, I take. I don't see how he protects this. So let's see. So here, here, here. But he has D4. It's D4, which is a big problem. Because if I take, he takes with that knight. And again, I don't see how I get rid of the rook. If I take, he takes. So perhaps I have to do this. He takes, I take. He goes here. It's not easy, it's not easy. Hello, Jay Candy. Um, yeah, I'll go knight f6. Actually, if he takes, I could also wait. But then he has queen a5. No, but then I have bishop d8. Uh -huh. So I finally think I found a line that I liked. If he takes, I think we're going to go here. Because I want to take with my knight on d5. If he goes queen a5 to defend this pawn, I have bishop d8. Let me make sure if that works. I don't think he can move anywhere with the rook. Can I move anywhere here? So I think this is the right move. If I take here with the knight, his rook is actually trapped. Again, this, I have this. And if I take here, also his bishop is loose. So let's see what he's going to do here. This is a tough game, and this is a tough game. We're playing against a good player who is uh, who's giving us a very good game. This was the Knight Earth. And the Knight Earth comes from the Sicilian defense. All right, so let's see what he is going to play here. Okay, he goes Rook C1. Okay, so we're... Uh, we're going to take. He has to go here. Okay, he goes there. Now, let's see. How do we do this? Now, I have one move that looks quite interesting. I'm thinking about the move a5, which, if he takes, I can take and win a piece because the queen is overloaded. And my idea is to go a4 and push the knight in the corner. Which looks pretty reasonable. I could also go h6 with the idea of taking in here. 
I say h6, maybe he can go here. Get this there. Let me go h6. I like the idea of taking and bishop g5 to take control over the dark squares that will become very weak in that case. But yeah, in any case, it's a, it's a pretty tricky game. Our opponent's playing really well. All right, so let's see what he is going to do here. Okay, so he goes rook c4, a good move. So if I take and here, his rook will not be hanging. He just moves back with the queen. I could consider the take in d5, but he just goes here. So perhaps it's time to trade off one of the rooks and alleviate some of the pressure. Again, maybe I should have gone... Maybe I really should go a5, a4 with the idea that I want to push the knight back and then maybe like here and here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go a5. Perhaps I should have played this on the last move, but it doesn't make a big difference. Thanks, thanks, Glow Party. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you. All right, so my needs to go here. His knight will have to go back to something like this. And again. If he takes, we're going to take the bishop, the queen is overworked, and we win a piece. Any tips for dealing with pawn pushers? I mean, if someone is pushing a lot of pawns in the opening, I would say just... Uh, they're usually weakening a lot of squares as well. So try to figure out where they're weakening their position and try to target those squares, if that makes sense. Okay, he goes bishop to f2, so I think we're going to continue with our plan. If he goes here, I believe we can trap the knight with bishop d8. If he takes, we can take, take, and win the rook. So let's go a4. The knight will have to go back to a passive square like c1 or a1. Then we can go bishop g5, attacking the queen, and perhaps just bring in the rook to put pressure here. Of course, of course. And again, I want to put pressure on the spawn on b2. So let me go rook fb8. I choose this rook so that this rook keeps defending this one. And next up, I want to go here. The spawn on b2 is a little bit awkward to defend. Because if he pushes up, my pawn is ready to take it. Or at least, it, it's not like he loses a pawn, but there is some tension there. So that's why having a pawn here is really helpful. Alright, so, so let's see what he's going to do. Bishop g5 is still in the air, taking the queen in the knight. Queen b7 as well, taking this pawn over here. Alright, so let's see what he is going to play here. Okay, so he goes pawn d4. Probably a very good move to put pressure on the spawn over here and my knight. Okay, so let's think. But probably bishop g5? Valuation, probably around equal, yeah. So let's say I go here. Where does he go? Okay, if I go here, I have a fork. If he goes here, Tough game, tough game. I have rook c8, take, take, here, and knight d3. Okay, let's go bishop g5, attack his queen. Also, I have to speed up a little bit. Maybe, 
No, but the problem... Maybe there and queen b5 to bring the idea of d5 into position. Oh, but d5 is not an idea because it's... Or bishop c1 is my threat there. Okay, knight b4, there, queen b5. But he has a... Ch no, he doesn't have a check. But if I... Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take here. He cannot take with the rook because of this. He's gotta take with the queen. Uh, with the bishop, sorry. I'll go here. Again, very tough to figure out what, what is going on. And again, he's playing a really good game. Knight f4 was an idea, but he just moves the queen, and I don't see... Maybe knight b4 was good. Yeah, okay, let's go here. I have to speed up a little bit. So let's see where he is going. Okay, so we could go here, take the rook. Looks good, looks good, because here we get this fork. Okay, we're gonna go 93. If he takes, I take. Here I win. He has to go there. We will go here, I suppose, yes, and then knight d1, and I believe our tactics should win us the game. But very, very tough game, he played, he is playing extremely well. I think, yeah, we'll just go here. To add more firepower to the attack. Okay, so goes rook c1, okay, now let's go knight d1 fork the queen and the rook and it's starting to collapse a little bit for him because there but that allows checkmate in one all right very good game very good game by gm hunter he played very very well all right so let's let's go over this game and this is actually the first game where I feel like um, we should pull up the computer as well because also for me it was difficult to understand what was going on. Because e4, c5, knight of 3 d6, d4, so takes, takes, knight of 6, knight c3, and a6. Again, this is where we start the knight of f3. I recommend you guys playing with e5, bishop b6, bishop b7, queen e2, short castles. Yeah, thank you for the game, knight end games, and really well played. Knight d5. Okay, so yeah, it is it is correct to take with the knight and keep the bishop on the board. I could take with the bishop as well, but then white has the advantage of the two bishops and, and more space on the queen side. So if possible, you want to take with the knight and keep this bishop. Okay, he goes here. Knight d7. This is all normal. B6. Perhaps slight inaccur inaccuracy. The computer wants to go h6, followed by bishop g5. Okay, but b6... I, I was worried here about the move f4 because it attacks my bishop indirectly. And if I move my bishop, let's say, the, or like I wanted to go bishop b4, which I thought was the best move. Now the problem is, let's say I take, or, or let's say he takes like this, and I go bishop g6, is that now he can go knight d4. And since I've played b7, b6, this knight is headed to the c6 square, and black is worse. All right, but he went here. I played queen c7. Yeah, I thought after that that I probably should have played bishop g6 to just prepare to move f5. Okay, queen c7, bishop d3. We trade, and here he makes the committal decision to take with the pawn. He can take with the queen as well. I wanted to go f5, push these pawns. And if he would have gone f4, again, we don't go e4 because he moves his queen back and then goes knight d4, either the d6 or c6, and I'll probably have to give up my bishop to prevent that. 
So what I wanted to do after f4, because white is threatening to take in here, and I don't want to take with my knight, I wanted to go g6. So that if he takes, I can just recapture and, again, block his knight's axis. And if he makes a normal move, like let's say here, I want to go bishop f6. And I feel like black has a pretty good position. All right, but he took with the pawn. We go queen b7, target this pawn over here, and he played rook c6. Now, again, we were calculating this move, rook a c8 to attack the rook to get to this pawn on d5. And I thought after rook c1, maybe to move knight c5 to cut off the defense of the rook on c6. But white, as we, cal oh, white, as we calculated, has the move d4. He's attacking my knight again. If I take, he takes with the knight, and now he has really strong control, control over the square. B4 is coming, and black is seriously worse. And if I take, then he takes again. This rook is over here is very strong. He gets pressure here, and black is just worse. All right, so knight f6 was the best move to pressure this pawn over here. If I take this pawn, I also defend this. I stop rook c7, so he has to take. And now queen e7 was a really good move because I want to take with my knight here. And queen a5 is not a good move because I have bishop d8 and I win material. So he played this, we take here. And now h6 was actually the best move here as I see. I was also thinking about a5 right away to attack his knight, but h6 was good. Rook here. a5, good move actually. Again, we want to push back the knight. Bishop f2, a4, knight back. It's saying, aha, bishop d8, bishop d8 apparently. Now let me ask you guys, what is the idea behind the move bishop d8? What does black want to do if we get one more move? Or let's say it was black to move here, what do we do? And apparently there's no way for white to defend against this. What is black's idea? Knight e7, perfect. And the rook on c6 is trapped. Excellent, yep. Also, we take away this square and this square. Yeah, but that was not on my radar. I played rook fb8, also a good move. Putting pressure here. He played d4, I thought a really good try. Bishop g5, attacking the queen and this. Play queen e2. Now e takes d4 was a good move because he's actually threatening to take. And I can use the e file to start creating threats. So here takes rook e8, good move attacking his queen. His queen doesn't have anywhere good to go to. I thought maybe queen d1. Queen d1 is maybe better. Yeah. But he went here, now knight e3 is very good attacking his rook. The rook is lacking a good square, and if he takes, I take. And he loses the queen. And so, yeah, again, if he goes here, I go knight d1, forking the queen and the rook, and I win. And if he goes here, I go here, he can now... He now has this square, but now knight d1 is even stronger. Because I take the queen, and if he goes here, I can give a check. And my knight is coming in, and if he takes, yeah, my queen. And black is, uh, black is, black should be winning here one way or another. For example, one line is, uh, let's say king here. I think I give a check, check, and then queen e1, and he actually cannot defend the queen. He's just getting checkmated. All right. So, uh, he played uh, here, knight d1, taking the queen, and now we got a checkmate. So, I think we, we played a very nice game in the in the Nidorf. Hope it was instructive to you guys. Okay, make sure to use all of these ideas. Alright, but let's see who is up next.